Hello, my name is Chris Roberts. Welcome to The Long Show. I'm here with my guest. Andy Bohannon. And so, Andy, you're probably going to be the most busiest guy coming up in the next week or two as school's getting ready to get out. With all the uh, with parks and rec programs happening, uh, we're certainly busy this time of year. We're Right now, we're just gearing up for the summertime. And um, we were talking off camera earlier, but we'll go right to it. One of the big things, swimming pools. Our swimming pools are probably our biggest attraction during the course of the summertime, and uh, for many reasons. People want to cool off. They're uh, inexpensive, and it's a great thing for the kids to go splash and just have fun and take swim lessons, learn how to swim. Uh, so uh, they will open um, Monday, June 20th, uh, we lock. We may have a short delay uh, at Robin Hood for a pump situation, uh, but we should be up and running within a day or two. Um, right now, our uh, everything's if according <laughs> to schedule, we'll open on time. But uh, you got to always build in a day of contingency. Well, if it's like today, like today, it's not too bad. But if it's a day like last Wednesday. Everybody wants your skin. <laughs> Last Wednesday, I was ready to jump in the pool. It was, uh, that whole week was pretty hot, and even our neighbors had their pool temperature close to 80, and I think this week has brought it back down for them. But uh, it's definitely at the time of year where the kids want to get out, and, you know, it's inexpensive. It's a dollar for children, $2 for adults to come in if you don't have a season pass. Uh, a season pass for a youth is $25.00. A season pass for a f whole family um, is fifty dollars for residents. So, really, it's very inexpensive for the year, and you can go in and just relax. And on the weekends, it's particularly not very busy. Um, Monday through Friday, from probably one to three o'clock, is our busiest time because of our playground programs are also at the pool. Some of the other uh, programs around the community come in and and uh, use the pool. Um, so the afternoons are busy, but the weekends and the evenings are perfect ideal family time for uh, time to come in and cool off. You got enough, enough lifeguards this year? We do. We actually had um, two cancel out, change of plans uh, recently, so we're in the process of, of looking and hiring for two more lifeguards this summer. So if anybody's out there and they want to uh, apply, we'll consider your application and, and go from there. Um, we're all set on the WSI, which is the water safety instructor, and those, uh, they give the swim instructions. Swim instructions, uh, we have two sessions. First session they sign up, I believe it's um, the eight, June 18th, which is a Saturday, mm -hmm. and they, uh, from 9 to 12, you can sign up at the pool, and then the lessons start on that Monday, and it's, uh, I think it's a half-hour lesson and they're at that particular pool, and they go for four weeks, uh, Monday through Thursday. And then the second session kicks in right at that following week. And those are very inexpensive. Those are $20. Are there any restrictions on type of food or beverages that the people can bring to the pool since you really don't have a snack bar there, do you? Uh, a very long time ago we had snack bars, but we haven't in uh, quite a while. Uh, there is a picnic area. And we ask that people eat their food in the picnic area. Uh, but you can drink um, uh, non-alcoholic beverages, obviously, uh, in the open area, uh, in the lawn. You have to, everything is on the lawn, um, it, no food or beverage on the cement. Um, and then you just kind of, uh, there. we do offer pool parties for birthdays, uh, Saturday mornings from, uh, nine or from eleven to twelve o'clock or ten o'clock to noon on Saturday mornings. Two lifeguards. The pool's yours. Up to thirty uh, uh, people, and it, then you can have full reign of the pool uh, for your party, and that's seventy-five dollars. That's like a lot better than having it in your backyard. Absolutely. No, you no don't financial have to... responsibility. No legal risk. You've got the pool. Uh, you get the pool, you get the lifeguards, and uh, you can bring in the birthday cake or just uh, have fun with a, you know, a team or a class, that sort of thing. And a lot of people take advantage of it and just have a nice private party. The, um, the summer program, when does that start the, for the kids? June 27th, um, we 
when we plan ahead, uh, we're planning back in January, February. It's no so day it's no always kind of shooting at the uh, the dartboard to figure <laughs> out when the last day of school is. And of course, this year we were ready to go for June twentieth, and then they had the school day, so we pushed back uh, a full mm-hmm. week, and uh, we'll start June twenty seventh for eight weeks and go um, Monday through Friday. Both camps are full, uh, which is a good sign mm-hmm. for us. We filled up at the beginning of, uh, actually, the end of May. and But what we are running this year, because of the the way school ends and the way school starts, uh, the week prior to our camp, we'll have a mini camp, and we'll have a post-mini camp for three days so uh, families can send their son or daughter, uh, and it's a limited registration. Uh, we don't have as many staff, but they'll do a lot of games, take some trips, and... Uh, Really have a good time. And the reason you only go eight weeks is because of state child care laws? Yeah, uh, child care, um, health and human services uh, plays a big role in, in our licensing. <coughs> or uh, We're license exempt, uh, being a municipality. So we have uh, eight weeks to run the program, and it's for children six and, and above. Uh, we can't start with uh, any child below that, and then it becomes into a daycare situation. And if we changed our licensing, um, then we could. If we were licensed, then we could start uh, below age six. Um, but we choose not to do that. But that have some serious changes in the cost. We, we would have cost changes. We would have uh, reporting uh, things that we need to do with the state and certain guidelines. A lot of our guidelines now exceed the state, so we... Um, it's kind of a fine balance of where you want to play. And you had talked earlier, you're going to have other um, camps within the camp, private camps within the camp, like soccer. Yeah, we've, um, uh, with the state budgets recently and uh, everybody trying to look for additional revenue sources, uh, we've um, basically contracted with uh, two different agencies, um, the Challenger Sports uh, soccer camps where they come in, they provide two uh, professional soccer players to do a um, uh, week-long uh, training camp with the kids who sign up. And the nice thing about that particular program is uh, there's two host families. Uh, so if somebody is looking for to send their child to camp, can't really maybe afford to. I think the camp is $75 for the week. Um, and may say, I could save $75 by hosting one of the players uh, for a week. And, you know, they just really need to sleep here, and that's it. And the, my son or daughter gets uh, to meet a soccer player for a full week. It's a perfect opportunity. And uh, the last year's got rave reviews from the program, and that's pretty exciting. We, we do that right at the recreation center. So if it rains, we can pull them indoors real quick. Uh, the other program that we're running is it's a first-year time that we've gone with it it's the u.s sports institute and for the week the children will learn a different sport every single day and i think they cover like nine different sports so uh, they'll be introduced to cricket uh something that's not native to north america uh i think they introduce them maybe to uh, rugby although they don't, they don't play a full <laughs> game but they just maybe introduce them to you know the tossing concepts and the kicking and that sort of thing they just have a lot of fun and it was ways for us to increase our revenue and not offer you know put a, provide resources as far as staff uh, so it was kind of a good way for us to get revenue you were talking about the rec center washington street is just about finished and it was, there was some plans behind the rec center? We have um, uh, what we've done with SUR, who, who is the contractor for uh, the Washington Street, is in return for um, storing all their equipment and uh, piles and piles, piles, of dirt. piles and dirt and stone, they <laughs> created a walking path around the front of the recreation center, uh, which is seven times around equals a mile. And then in the back, they're leveling it all out um, so we have a playing surface. So like the soccer camps that I mentioned uh, earlier in the Sports Institute, they now have a facility that they can host their camp at. And it will be, uh, it's a win-win situation. Um, We needed a little upgrade back there, and we received it. So 
uh, we're pleased with what's happening. Serious and kind saves the taxpayers money. Yeah, absolutely. And um, the, the walking path was a nice addition to the recreation center. Yeah, because more and more, because the elderly want to walk, they want a smooth area. So that'll give them a nice smooth area. They can walk and talk and have a good time, socialize. Eventually, and um, eventually, what will happen is uh, we'll have a couple benches uh, along the path. <laughs> At the very end of the uh, triangle, as we call it, uh, there's a rain garden that's being installed as part of the project. So we may have a bench out there so people can look at you know, the rain garden. The one we have at the back of the recreation center is doing very well. Um, so it's just something where people can come. I'd like to have more concerts on that uh, in the park. We've got um, working out with um, uh, the Key Music Festival when they're at Labor Day weekend. Uh, to have a, the rec center as a venue, so um, people, more people will start to utilize uh, that park because I think it's an asset to the city of Keene. When you're talking about more concerts, the amphitheater, are people using the amphitheater or are you trying to get more work? Again, uh, Kevin Dremel with uh, the Keene Music uh, Downtown Music Festival, uh, he and I have been working together and we do have some venue uh, concerts. I think we just had one this past weekend. Actually, the the rain on Saturday <laughs> kind of killed, <laughs> spoiled his event. Uh, but we do have a, a play production that's going in there two weeks from now, um, a Midsummer Night, a Mid Midsummer's Night, Night Dream, Dream. and uh, some other events that are planned. And so it's nice to see the community uh, making an outreach and, and utilizing that venue because it's really spectacular. And uh, it's got a nice uh, platform and a nice stage area, a nice area for people to sit and relax and enjoy a show. And the cost, for the people who don't know, it's at Robin Hood Park. Uh, the, the, uh, it's in Robin Hood Park at the amphitheater. And um, there's electricity. So if you need the electricity for your program, it's fifty dollars. Um, other than that, um, there's no charge. Uh, you know, we collect the, the the trash, that sort of thing, on the on the following Monday. Uh, you know, there's a few barrels that are out there, but um, it's a perfect opportunity for somebody to really have a stage and pre perform in the outdoors and have a nice quiet setting. And last year they were repairing the rock wall. How is that coming? Uh, the rock wall is, uh, they finished the first tier. The second tier is in the CIP project, uh, in the CIT budget um, for the following year. So eventually uh, the second tier will be completed. Um, as part of the dam project that will be going on, uh, hopefully Nick, in the fall, we'll have a little beautification um, project going on simultaneously. We didn't want to do it. Uh, without doing the major project just because of the construction, that sort of thing. Gazebo will go right in overlooking the the, uh, the pond and a couple benches uh, really spruce up the area a little bit, and I think it'll be a nice addition to Robin Hood Park. The um, When you're talking about the dam project, what about the fish? Uh, they'll, we will be working with uh, the New Hampshire Fish and Game to um, do everything possible as far as conservation uh, that, we're, that we're supposed to. And ideally, uh, the engineering department of public works, uh, they're the lead on the project. And uh, they're, it's in my park, so I'm kind of working <laughs> with them. So once the dam project is done, it can still have its fishing tournaments and the kids will still be able to go down there and fish. Yeah, it's funny. Every year, uh, at least somebody new comes up to me who's never been to the fishing derby and says, have you ever been? I'm like, yeah. You go, you can't, you're shoulder to shoulder <laughs> casting because there's so many people up there. And it, it's just a, such a great event. Um, fathers, uh, and daughters, fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, or anybody, grandparents go up. And it's just it's a fun event to watch. The kids have such a great time. And uh, the, I believe it's the Rotary Club who, who puts that on, and they do a fabulous job. The, uh, my grandson kept pushing me and pushing me to get my fishing license. I said, okay, I'll do it. He said, come in. I said, yep, the lady's uh, mailing it, and it came in Friday and Saturday morning. My, wife, my daughter dropped them off at like 6.30. Come on, Papa, we've got to go, we've got to go. And we were out there, and it was pouring like crazy. And, but he caught one a little perch, <laughs> about six inches. 
it, catch and release. We put it back and say, yeah. hopefully it'll come back at bigger later. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, and most of the people I see up there catch release, uh, and uh, uh, most of the bigger fish are are, are gone. Uh, I'm sure there's probably uh, some Walter swimming around up there uh, that's big <laughs> enough that nobody's caught yet, but uh, not to my knowledge. We may find them in the fall. The um, Everybody talks about <clears throat> Wheelock Park and their program. What about Robin Hood's Park with their programs for kids? We have um, the same programs at, at each park. Uh, the playground program uh, shadows each other. Um, so uh, for scheduling purposes, uh, one park's not really doing anything different than the other. Uh, we found that, you know, parents are very, uh, um, well, how come Wheelock's doing this and Robin Hood's not? They're both doing the same thing. They may do it on a different day, uh, but their programs are the same. They're, they do the same trips. Uh, you know, the bus routes pick up one and then they pick up the other. So, uh, they very much the same program, and uh, they're both. We've consolidated from having one at, at Fuller Park and Jonathan Daniels to the Wheelock and Robin Hood because of the pools. We cut down our costs that way. Cut the uh, cut down our staffing, uh, or uh, changed our staff way that we handled staff. So um, it all works out really well now for I think for all the participants and the parents. And. The little negative part, <clears throat> no matter what type of daycare or summer camp that you have, you always get a few parents who will say, I can't show up at, at closing time. How are you going to deal with those parents? We have, um, we have a late fee uh, that the children can get picked up uh, no later than 5.15. And so from 4 to 5.15, that gives you an hour and 15 minutes to get your child. Uh, I believe it's $35 for the week. And um, we have a staff person that stays on. It's, it's never the they take they take shifts. So <laughs> maybe every Tuesday, Joe is working on uh, the, that afternoon. Um, but for the most part, parents respect that. And I, to my knowledge, we've only had maybe one or two uh, have go a little bit later than five fifteen. At that time of the year, the parents want to get home as well, and they're not so. Uh, focused on staying in the office for very long. And plus, when you, you stop and you realize your worker has been there between probably from 7.30 to 5.15, they have a life. They want to be able to enjoy summer, summer. Yeah, and it's we usually typically only have two or three kids that are uh, for that um, extended period of time, so it's not as bad. If there were a lot more <laughs> than that, we would have to have additional staff. Um, but for the most part, our staff is staying on. We end the program at four, uh, and they're cleaning up and making sure everybody's on their way before they they head out. Um, so uh, it's a good something for parents to take advantage of if they need it. And some of the activities at Wheelock. Wheelock has been quite busy. You had a horseshoe tournament, dog show. Uh, this past week or the this past weekend, you had the Cal Ripken playoffs. The weekend before, you had um, Cal Ripken happening. You had uh, Allison Barden. You had the horse show, and you had a dog show. Uh, uh, not a horse show, a horseshoe Jeez. tournament. Uh, I don't think we have any horse shows going on. <laughs> um, but the horseshoe tournament. So it was jam-packed, and parts were parked everywhere. And it's a good thing to see within the within the park when so many people are there utilizing it for so many different purposes. Um, just last night I drove through the park and uh, there was a group of people just playing volleyball on the on the sand court and right outside of uh, the outfield of O'Neill Field was a couple grills. Some people were having a birthday they party. party. <laughs> and you know that that's that's free. You don't have to reserve that if you have a bigger. They could have reserved the pavilion uh, by the horseshoe courts, or they could have reserved the um, the the playground building. Um, both were available, but it, it's just another uh, uh, accessibility that they have to enjoy the park without any without any cost, and it's it's a nice thing to see. I, I smiled as I drove through <laughs> saying, hey, you know, somebody's taking advantage of the picnic tables and enjoying themselves and having a good 
family time. Are there going to be any summer activities on the hockey rink this year? Um, no, we don't schedule uh, <clears throat> groups or uh, in that particular. We found last year we uh, had some new lights installed the previous year for the uh, hockey in the in the winter time, and they're they're the way they're shining down on the on the rink uh, one of them uh, goes into the softball field in the second baseman first baseman and right fielder and center fielder for o'neill field uh can't see the pick up the ball uh, off the bat and for that reason we've turned them off for the summertime and with the summertime uh, it doesn't get light uh, i mean it doesn't dark. get dark uh this time of year until 8:30 quarter or 9 so you have plenty of resources uh, available, and I think that's ample time for people to get out and uh, get exercise. Now, the the lights that we have on the basketball courts down on Water Street, those are being used. I drove by the other day and saw uh, both courts, full court games going on with people waiting to get on. Uh, that was a great sight to see uh, on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, a lot of guys getting out there and playing, which is which is fun to see. And one of the things with Water Street, there's not vandalism, there's not graffiti. It's just a clean place, and the people just seem to take care of it. Uh, knock on wood. Uh, we hope that that's the case and that continues. But you're right. Uh, people do enjoy the facility. Um, there's beautiful courts. They're lighted. Um, we offer trash. It's right off the um, the bike path so people can walk there. They can <coughs> Bike, there's a small parking lot uh, that they can use, so it's a good resource. And going back to Wheel Lake Park, camping, the campgrounds, when is that open? How much is it going to cost? We open Memorial Day uh, through Labor Day, and for a resident uh, without electricity uh, is $16 a day. With electricity, it's $19 a day, and then there's a weekly fee, um, that, and we offer uh, one week stay. Yeah, up to three weeks, and then you've got to be out for two weeks. Um, it's uh, We don't take residential uh, for the summer. Otherwise, I think we'd probably be full, but that's not the intent of the campground. Um, so it's a good resource for people who just want to open up the camper for the weekend, get the kids out, experience camping for the first time before you may adventure an hour or two away and they find out that camping is not the activity for your family, this is a good time, to, a good place to do it. It's clean, it's friendly, uh, and with all the resources right there in Wheelock Park. When um, you talk about, is there a restriction on the, the length of the camper or motor home? Or, and second, do I have to have a vehicle to camp at the campground? No, you can tent uh, at the camp. Um, we have tent sites and we have RV sites. Uh, the the larger Class A, um, uh, newer RVs that come in, uh, we don't quite have the electricity to, uh, you know, the demands that they have for the newer vehicles because the newer vehicles are... Houses on wheels. Uh, uh, they're amazing. Uh, and uh, I always say if I'm going to win the lottery, that's what <laughs> I'm going to purchase and go around the, the, the country. But um, the, mm -hmm. the demand there is a little bit stronger for what we have so what they find, and our, uh, the director that we have out there who ex checks people in, she also has a Class A, and she can help them with, okay, well, don't run this, this, and this. At the same time, you may want to just make sure you're, uh, you're using your resource correctly. So we've, we see all sizes in there. The, um, I know you're working on a master plan, but like we were talking about when you go through Wheelock, and yet I was out there, too, because my grandson was playing baseball. But there's really no empty space at Wheelock. It's busting out. There, there really isn't much gr possibility of growth out there, is there, for the, the demand that people want to put on it? There, there's actually some potential. Um, you know, the, the sand pit area behind uh, the Cal Ripken area behind the campground, has always been thought of as a potential site for future development. Um, the only other possible thing that you could look at is a redesign uh, within the park, although it would be very hard to do just because of everything's already established. Um, 
but there might be a resource that um, uh, is its purpose could be changed uh, and see where that goes. But I think the master plan is going to tell us quite a bit of information that we're looking for and give us that blueprint for the next five to ten years for uh, budgeting purposes and, and project. And the middle school, which uses Carpenter Field, is moving. They're going to have their own facilities. The city should be able to, your direct department should be able to get some use out of Carpenter Field. I know the uh, city manager is working with the school, depart uh, school district on uh, uh, possibly acquiring um, Carpenter Street for that to come back to the city and utilize that as a park. Um, so that, it's a wide open canvas uh, as far as, you know, what are our needs here in Keene? And, and this is a perfect opportunity for us to build upon um, should we acquire the property. Um, and um, uh, with the middle school going out to Maple Avenue makes a little bit of challenges. Uh, two fields that we had behind Jonathan Daniels, uh, they need to create their soccer field there. It needed a lot of turf improvement. So this year we had to move those two Little League fields up to Fuller for full time and change some of the venues for, uh, say, lacrosse, and uh, which caused a little bit of a hiccup. But I, everybody made it through and understood that, you know, it's only temporary and we're trying to get, you know, the Utilize our resources the best way we can, and I think everybody's okay with that. It never dawned on me that I never went to um, Jonathan Daniels this year, and I was always going to Fuller. Now I understand the reason why. Yeah, yeah and that and that was it. And um, you know, the two great fields. Uh, one's got parking, and one's a little bit further, but uh, same situation, uh, kind of almost at Jonathan Daniels. And uh, but it's it's a nice. Re I remember playing a lot of my Pee Wee games up at, at Fuller and. Uh, it's a nice place to uh, the kids have, uh, can go up to the playground of those basketball courts. Uh, Fuller's kind of a hidden yeah. gem. The um, when we talk about Carpenter Field, they used to have a, a number of dog shows, or or we you know, always wanted to have pump, the cats program. Yep, the <laughs> Canine always, Agility <laughs> Training Society. It was always a, those people are always great. They always donate money to the to the rec center. One of the questions that it's coming up. The dog park. <clears throat> now we, last week in the city council, we were given a, a couple of petitions concerning some people, addressing some people's concern about the dog park. Certainly. And um, the, the neighborhood, uh, likely so, they, uh, it's a dead end street and they're concerned a little bit about the parking uh, or the traffic mm. flow that would be created by the park. Uh, we've addressed their first initial concern, which was the uh, parking lot off the end of Bar Bent Court and putting it off of Arch Street. Um, the reason why we looked at this particular property, the infrastructure mm -hmm. was already there. Uh, it was not going to cause, it was already city property, it was already a parking lot, and um, it was kind of a good fit. We thought there was enough buffer uh, between uh, the park itself and the residents, and uh, felt that was the, the right choice for, you know, we're going to continue to work with the, the residents uh, of that area and make sure that this is a uh, welcomed park uh, for all. And I haven't been to a lot, but I've never seen a dog park where people hang out and cause problems. It usually... There's a lot of times middle class, upper middle class people who just bring their dogs there and just sit and chat in like a social place. It, it's very social. And um, in visiting the Dairy Park, um, which is the first one that we heard about, and they're fairly, they're similar to the one that we're proposing, um, is residential. Um, you go over a bridge and, and there it is. And... Uh, Concord uh, visited there. They're in. A, they're more in a park setting, um, along the river. And, but it's it's all social. The dogs are not barking like they. You know, when you have a car drive by and your neighbor's dog just starts going, it's not like that. They're, they, if it's a if it's a bark, it's with the dog, and it's not uh, an aggressive bark that you hope it isn't. And uh, two of the members of. 
the committee that I've been working with travel around all in New England uh, and see all these different parks and if they've brought what they think uh, all their positives that they've seen to this park and I think it's going to be truly an asset for the city of Keene. And the other one where waste and smell. The, the, the owners do a really good job of cleaning up after their dogs. Absolutely, and and it's hard, uh, I think, sometimes for residents to, to picture that because um, they may see it on the you know uh, on their on their street or what it's in um, in Wheelock Park, and and they may have had a particular instance. And I know that we just went through this with Ash Willet River Park, but the folks who use a dog park are there for um, it, their enjoyment. They want to go and they want to enjoy it, and they've put a lot of effort into it, uh, especially the committee who's been putting this together. They want to see others enjoy it, and they're going to make sure that the, it's a clean uh, environment mm-hmm. and people are picking up after one another. And they'll be so, like we said, it's social, and they'll be social behaviors that if social you're Social pressures if you're not cleaning abso- up after your dog. Absolutely. If, if people aren't going to want to... Uh, you to come to the park and you're not going to feel welcomed from those uh, other dog owners if you're not taking care of your dog or if your dog's aggressive um, uh, and they'll probably just ask you not to come back Um, so there are those things that we're going to try to do to work with all the users and make sure that it's a uh, a facility that all everybody wants to use and because of the, the financial times the whole work the idea is to raise money and you come to the FOP every month with more and more money for the dog park. How much have you raised and what's your goal? They've raised just slightly over $5,000. And their goal, their initial goal is 10000 And um, if they can raise that, then they'll be able to start looking at to, in the infrastructure, um, the <clears> fencing. <throat> uh, this project is not going to start anytime soon. It's not going to be this summer or fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, most likely will be next spring or maybe even the fall, depending on how the donations come in. The sit, the, this group needed a particular location so they could go out and begin to uh, fundraise through grants and apply for different scholarships, uh, which they are doing. And that's where the bigger money is. Right now they have cans all around on town. town. Uh, collecting money. They've had some anonymous donations come through, some corporations, mm-hmm. some trusts. Uh, so just about over $5,000 is what they've collected so far. And that's, uh, you know, a pat on the back to them because it's hard times right now and people are really saying, you know, looking at where their money's going and they feel that this is well-deserved. If we go down to Carpenter Field, there's a little small fenced-in area which people put their dogs. Mm-hmm. Is is that going to be something like a more expansive thing at the dog park, or is it just going to be an open fenced-in field? It's going to be more um, uh, fenced-in, uh, just open field. Mm-hmm. Uh, there will be some obstacles in there, but not what you see at, like the agility mm-hmm. training um, shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was one of the things that this particular group does, did not want um, because what happens is people... One, they don't know how to use it, and uh, higher level of maintenance is required when you start putting things like that Mm -hmm. in. So there'll be some trees, there'll be some, um, uh, you know, benches, uh, you know, maybe a fire hydrant or two, uh, but there's just some things that are going to be fun and mostly a fence and a walking pass. Every dog park has to have a fire hydrant. Absolutely. When you're talking about maintenance and we're talking about a park, Let's not move over to the skate park. Mm-hmm. How's that looking? Uh, there, I went in just the other day to uh, take a look around and uh, the repairs that we made mm-hmm. last year are holding up. Um, uh, still a lot of kids using that. Um, and we actually have our, um, I believe we're in the works of putting together another ramp jam uh, for the kids this summer. Uh, and uh, it's... Certainly serving the need currently um, with the development of on Gilbo Ave, and uh, we've got in the CIP budget uh, for 2000, I think it's 14 or 15, looking at um, building a new park. Uh, so we're, we're look, 
looking down the road, trying to find out what's going to best serve the community from, the, from that respect. Yeah, because we were talking last year, Sean White and your daughter knowing Sean White. Yes. And <laughs> <laughs> Sean White is a good role model for a lot of these kids. Yeah, and uh, Tony Hawk uh, is another one that um, uh, certainly was my generation, and uh, some of the kids now uh, may have others that they're looking at, but Sean White is definitely a good role model for the kids to, to look at and uh, experience. We had a couple kids uh one kid who comes over and uses our park from from Brattleboro um, and trains was on a Disney uh, X Games show, uh, which was kind of nice. He he missed our event because he was doing that. So we do get some kids who are very serious about it, and uh, some other kids who are just trying it out for the first time and to see whether or not they like it or not. And uh, the skate park does have a, a negative stigma within the community, but if you go down and take the time. It's not the kids within the park. It's uh, you know, it's because we have a public parking lot right outside, and it, uh, unfortunately, bad situations sometimes occur in there. Would your your other program to to get up and go and get the kids active, the catch program? We as adults shouldn't be telling kids how they should get up and exercise. If they're exercising, that is good. And if you look at a lot of the kids at the the skate park. Some of them are exercising two to three hours a day. Uh, there's no way I would be able to do so <laughs> what they do. Uh, and you're right, they're there for hours. And uh, they're just riding up and down the ramps. And, and it takes a lot of energy and uh, physical conditioning. And, and uh, they're pretty good at it. Three hours at the state park is a heck of a lot better than three hours in front of Nintendo or Sony PlayStation. Absolutely. The... Um, <clears throat> So for the rec center, during the summer, is the rec center going to be open like you have it now, sometimes on the weekends and sometimes after school? We changed the hours during the course of the summertime. Um, we used to, we're pretty much closed in the evenings and the weekends, uh, unless there's a function that somebody's booked. Um, we have... Um, uh, we use the multi-purpose room for our uh, arts in the park. Uh, we, we bring in the kids in, in every Thursday or Wednesday. I think it's Wednesdays now. Um, shows that the, the different kids can come in and, and see. Uh, we still have walking that's available. We have uh, basketball from 12 to 2 on uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the people who work the second and third shift. Um, we still, we have a nice crowd there, and, and um, uh, as the Griselda, Griselda's ladies who who come in, the senior shape up, uh, uh, those are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So there's a lot of programs still going on during the day, but during the evening and the in the weekend hours, we're closed. The um, <clears throat> any more trips coming up? Uh, they all sold out. Um, we just booked. Uh, well, we had the Big E that happens every September. And we just booked uh, the Rockettes for December and um, the Broadway show Jersey Boys uh, in October. And Jersey Boys is a fantastic show. Um, and if anybody's interested, uh, I think we just booked them on Friday uh, that the shows were released and we, we got our tickets. So uh, we still have the bus uh, costs and everything to, to figure out, but we'll know that by the end of today or tomorrow. So. And all your Red Sox tickets are all All the Red Sox tickets are sold out. (laughs) And uh, I think probably the beginning of April, people were saying, oh, why did I buy those tickets? And now they're they're saying, all right, give me the tickets, give me the tickets. I want to go because Red Sox are red hot right now. So that's a good thing. The best record in baseball. That that helps us sell our tickets if we, you know, gets people excited about them. It's a perfect way to go down and see a game. And to be honest, some people, you know, they buy their ticket back in February Mm. Something may happen in July and, and August that they can't go, and if there's only one or two people on the waiting list, we call everybody on that waiting <clears> list to see uh, if we have two tickets come up. We just start, and the first one to call back is <clears> that it's their lucky day, it, and it happens on every trip. So if you're out there and you're thinking, oh, I want to still go, it might be worth your time, time to go on the waiting uh, list. Go on the waiting list. <clears throat> and so... Part of your other part is the cemeteries. How is the cemeteries going? 
We've had a, a very good year. Uh, as you recall, <laughs> last year this time we had some vandalism. Then we had some vandalism again in uh, September, Labor Day. We actually, the, the Keene police uh, worked very hard and caught the three individuals. And they've been, uh, one of them's been prosecuted. The other two are uh, still waiting their court date. Um, so I, I commend them for that effort. Um, and, but right now our cemeteries are in great shape. Uh, we get a little extra help from the Public Works Department this time of year to maintain as a growing season is kind of fast and furious and it's very difficult to keep up with and um, so we're, we're, we're doing good right now. I noticed that you had the mad science camps. Yep. That's, I heard them on the radio about that's uh, another one of those ways that we can uh, provide a program and generate revenue. Uh, and uh, Mad Science, we've been working with them for the last three years. And the kids, if you're thinking about science or you want to be a scientist and or you're just looking for that summer program that's different and unique, this is, the, this is it. They have a lot of fun. You know, they they wear the lab coat and the kids uh, make do bubble potions and bizarre things and rockets and uh, it's great stuff that they uh, they're always showing me. It's just amazing. And what they are providing one of the uh, arts in the park shows. So if you're interested in the, the mad science program but don't know what it is, come and see the show. Get a good idea for it, and if you really like it, then you have the opportunity to still sign up for the for the camp. The Junior Ranger program. That is, we work with um, the the Army Corps of Engineers, and that's a free camp. Uh, I believe they only take like fifteen uh, kids, but it's free, and <laughs> it's you can't go wrong with it. They, it's an ecology program that is located at the dam itself, uh, whether it be um, Surrey Dam or Otterbrook Dam. And they do a little ceremony at the end, uh, and the kids have fun. Uh, and it's a really cool program. Another one that seems to be well attended, the Big Wheel Race. Yeah, we have our annual Big Wheel Race at the end of um, uh, beginning of September, which this year will be just the beginning of school, um, so we may push that back a day. But uh, the Cashman family, uh, local family here in town, who is big into racing and the sporting community, uh, supports this event very strongly, and we're happy to have them. And uh, we go out to Wheelock Park on Durling Field after the softball season is has occurred and we just have a lot of fun and it's for ages uh, three through eight and they just race right around dirling the bases and it's kind of fun to watch the kids on big wheels we get the big wheels they're disappearing so they are disappearing so we had a little <laughs> few years ago and we had to replace them but luckily uh, uh one of the local big box stores here in town uh carried a few and we bought a few extras and uh we have them on on uh up on top of the storage area, so we have a few new ones. Track camp? Yeah, that's um, working with the uh, Keen High girls coach, Bill Derry, offers a camp uh, in Wheelock, and it's a perfect opportunity. I don't know if it, folks haven't noticed around town or reading the newspapers, mm. but Keene is a hotbed for, for track and field and cross country. Uh, Chloe McCleskey is going off to Duke, uh, running um, uh, for the, the Duke uh, <coughs> cross country team. That's a Division One school, which is you know top notch. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, and she's going to get a fine education out of that. But there's a lot of other kids who are going to Division Two and Division Three, and it all starts at the middle school and lower. And that's what this camp is really doing: is introducing them to uh, the the sport which is an individual sport. It's a lifelong sport where they can come in, compete at the, at the junior high level, and then on at the high school, and maybe if they're so lucky to go on to the uh, uh, college level. Keene State's got an amazing program, but uh, Bill Derry does a nice job with this program. He's an excellent coach, and the kids would 
learn something new, I'm sure, by attending and, and maybe find a desire to start running and uh, carry on for the rest of their life. Cause even a lot of people in Keene don't even realize that the middle school has a track program. No, because they don't have a track. Well, they do now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, I think that's that's a something to be said about the local programs is we don't have <laughs> tracks for some of these. I remember when Conant High School over in Jaffrey was wanting state championship after state championship, and they didn't have any facilities. The kids were running in the hallways, uh, and, and now they do. And Keene State's the same way. They don't have a track and uh, program, but they, they're winning state, you know, national championships. Uh, so it's a lot to be said for the local coaches, which says, okay, these are quality programs that my son and daughter can participate in, and they're going to have fun and they're going to learn because the quality of the coaching staff is top-notch. And that's, that's great for the city of Keene. And one of the things about the, the track program, unlike – looking at basketball, football, hockey, they're all expensive. They're all expensive sports. And a lot of them either get on the AAU team or traveling teams. And so by the time the kids get to ninth grade, if, you just, if your son's just walking off the street and wants to play baseball or hockey, he has little to no chance whatsoever. Absolutely. Where, where track, it almost doesn't matter where you start. If you've got the ability and the desire to work hard, you can move right up to the top. And, and it's relatively inexpensive because you just need a pair of running shoes. And, um, you know, you might be short distance, might be long distance, but you don't need a track to, to, to learn or practice. You know, you can run around your neighborhood. You, know, you can uh, run through some of our parks, which is the, a lot of the cross-country program does. Uh, the middle schools got to find a new <laughs> venue for their cross-country program because they would run uh, up in Robin Hood Park. Um, so they've got to find a new venue out in uh, West Keene, which I'm sure they'll be able to do. But um, it, you can experience our park system and be getting exercise, and hopefully that will carry over for you uh, later in life uh, and something that you can share with your kids or walk with your kids or participate in races like four and the fourth uh, just for a good time with walking, running. Um, there's a lot to do in the community by just being have the ability to run recreationally or competitively. And we, you've been getting more and more donations for the chapel? The chapel is something that um, we're working on, uh, getting some repairs done. Um, we're, we're seeking out a few uh, quotes uh, on different projects. So we're <coughs> very fortunate to have uh, a gentleman here in town that's looking to uh, seek some of those don donations for us on the particular projects. And um, it's kind of a gem that a lot of people don't know about. Um, it's uh, under a trust, so it has some certain guidelines that meet. Uh, Kevin Drummel from the, the Music mm -hmm. Fest He's been working with us to, uh, he provides a concert series in the chapel, which raises funds for that. He's also working on, um, uh, we've allowed him to do a couple recording sessions in the, in the chapel. And those recording sessions, all the funds from the sales of those CDs go back to um, the chapel, uh, which is a really nice thing. Um, for us to be able to utilize uh, and work in partnership with somebody like Kevin who cares about the facilities here in, in Keene and knows that it's a, it's a beautiful venue. The, um, I don't think people realize everything that you and your department does. Memorial Day was well attended this year. It, it looked really nice. You had the, the flower flower boxes that were put up there for the little kids yeah those are the the, uh, the gardens are a new addition to the recreation center um, as part of the uh, catch and we've combined our program with the early sprouts program so that's our initial we've got the the uh, grant from Antioch and um, built the beds in the summertime we're going to be working with MDS to come in and maintain the beds so it's a nice community partnership a true community <coughs> garden and uh, but Memorial Day is, it's uh, the park always looks nice, um, 
and uh, you know, we have the war memorial that's uh, unfortunately we've got some cracks in it that are very costly to repair so the, the water level gets put in for memorial day and veterans day and, and uh, that's it we'd kind of almost like to do some gardens in there or something and make it spruced up a little bit for the whole year uh, really make it a, a you know, memorial a nice attraction um, but uh, Memorial Day is a, it's a nice event for the veterans and for all those who served, and it's nice to see such a crowd at our park, and um, a lot of people enjoy it, and the parade is always nice to see. You, you talked about MDS. This is really a brutal time, especially with the state budget for, for special need children and even some special need adults. You do a really great program on some of your basketball tournaments for Special Olympics. Do you have anything planning coming up to, to help people like development ones, whether it's Special Olympics programs or other type of programs? Well, I'd probably, um, just along the Special Olympics line, I uh, would like to give a huge congratulations to Cindy Bunzel. Cindy is a local athlete who has been participating in the, the program since it's almost its inception. She uh, has been to a few world games and is leaving Friday for Greece um, for the world games that are going to be held in Athens. Um, I think this might be her third world games that she's attending. She's going over to participate in bocce. And so good luck to Cindy. I hope she does well and enjoys herself. And uh, the whole New Hampshire team's going over, so good luck to them as well. Um, and any athlete who's competing. But... Um, we just came off our summer games that were held over at UNH. Mm. Uh, everybody had a great time. Uh, we got the basketball tournament, and then in the summer they practice uh, softball, and they'll have the tournament right here in Keene uh, at the Wheelock Park in September. So it's always a good thing. The um, the gardens, uh, you know, working with a partnership with them. Um, we offer some training through MDS for our summer staff to work with uh, children with special needs because we have a few of them in our summer program. And it's a good training, I think, for just in general. Um, and the folks over there, really good people to work with and a uh, good asset to have here in the community of Keene. The um, kind of put you on a spot. We've got a few minutes left. Yeah. <clears throat> the budget's going down. The city has a really tight budget. You have more and more demands on your facilities. How do you think you're going to be able to make it work next year or the year after? Uh, I think we'll do a, a, a good job. Um, it's a matter of prioritizing and shifting uh, some of the things that we do now and looking at our needs and our resources um, and looking at the community needs. We couldn't have asked for a better time for the master plan. That's really going to help us uh, address some of our revenue questions, our programming questions, um, our, our maintenance questions. Uh, so it's like the ideal time to really prepare us for that next budget cycle. And I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I think we, we live in a community that uh, really cherishes its park system. Um, we have a lot of positive things going for us. The uh, the budget is just one avenue for us to make sure we maintain the levels of service that people expect. And that makes it a challenge for our maintenance crew uh, and our programming staff and our office staff. And we just need to um, sometimes rethink the think uh, and look at it, different avenues that, like our, you know, our mad science program, our challenges soccer, uh, U.S. sports, other programs that are going to come in and bring us revenue. Um, you know, our facility up at the recreation center now has uh, Wi-Fi capable in the multi-purpose room and the meeting rooms on the first floor. So for groups who are looking to uh, rent space, we're very affordable. Um, we do have a couple meetings that happen on a regular basis. We're almost empty almost every single day uh, uh, during the middle of the week, during the week from, you know, 8 a.m. to noon so or even till 2 o'clock. So and we've with the shift of our after school program to the upstairs that allows us to maintain those rooms on the on the lower level a little bit higher quality for those businesses who are coming in to maybe just have a quick uh, interview process or 
um, you know, just need a little bit of a retreat and they can come into the rec center or uh, we've we've had that a few times recently where groups coming in to uh, utilize the game room for staff, you know, retreat or something to that effect. So, it, and with the boardroom that's right next to it, you got wire, internet, wireless access, and so that's good. Get down to the last minute. Yep. Okay. The two ways where people can contact you? Uh, come into our office or call us at 357-9829. Uh, or visit our website, which is, if you go to the city of Keene, www.ci.nh.us, and you'll be happy to find all the programs that we offer and others in other departments as well. But uh, visit us at the Parks and Recreation Department. And you also use Facebook? Uh, we also use Facebook for updates, and uh, so we're, we're into almost everything you can think of. Well, Andy, I want to thank you for thank coming Thank you, Chris. Here. Appreciate it. And I'm pretty sure the people of Keene will enjoy everything you had to say. Thank you. And so my name is Chris Roberts. Thank you for being here with Andy Bohannon and myself, and we'll see you on the long road.